Good morning and welcome to a very happy Claude and the Banster show this morning because yes, we uh, we Arsenal put up a great show at the Hawthorns yesterday, uh, giving Sam Allardyce a four 0 thrashing. And um, in the in with me today, I've got the great Kenny Ken. How are you, Kenny? Um, very good. You know, I've um, we won yesterday. Um, we won playing well. We have to be realistic about the opposition. And it's one of those things where if you give this Arsenal side space and you and you play with um, good players, you're playing with confidence, then we're gonna we're gonna rip you. Highlight of, highlight of yesterday was the second goal. Beautiful play, beautiful play. Another highlight for me was Lacazette's um, um, brace. He's in a good, rich vein of form. Yeah. I was very happy with um, obviously Smith Rowe's going to get the, the plaudits. So is um, Bakayo Saka going to get the plaudits. And you know this is um, we've improved. And but let's be realistic and look at analyze um, what we've seen in the last week. Um, Chelsea was fine. Chelsea was a derby match, took care of itself. I'm very, 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 very happy with that because, you know, Chelsea were highly inflated opinions of themselves and they generally believed that they had to turn up and beat us. Brighton, grand that result. You know, first half I wasn't too pleased with. Second half, I thought we were in complete control. And yesterday, with the greatest respect to West Brom, why, why did you sack, sack um, Bilic? When you actually look more dangerous and more potent, than, and by bringing back Big Sam, and you give it, you brought a long ball manager, but you haven't got long ball players in your team. Mm-hmm. So, let, let, I'm so glad that you know that we, it was West Brom we played, so we can get our confidence back, score some good goals, and play really well. But the, the, the reason why I was happy is because we earned the right to win. But I always say, but with this side. Let's not get carried away. Let's not throw top stones four, at each other. Top four now. Terry, top four challenge now. No, top no, 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 no. Look, you've got to look at the mathematics. We've got we've got sixty three points to go for. We've got we're on twenty three points. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's dropping points. What we do know factually is that every team is beatable. We're probably the exception of probably Liverpool, but Liverpool got a difficult game tomorrow against um, European chase in Southampton, who. But who are only two points ahead of us, two plays ahead of us now. So that's a difficult game for Liverpool and a difficult game for Southampton. And we've got really difficult games coming ahead. That's where the real test starts. And, and people may throw stones at us. I know there's some pork chops in um, on fan yeah. cams, pork chops in the um, in Twitter saying you are titter out and blah blah. You know, I'm not too funny, right? Is that you're you, you're the ones that always say, saying let's stick together, let's um, be united. You're the first one when we win a game. Instead of celebrating your win, our win. Remember, it's our win, not your. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. You exactly. both go at everyone else's. I mean, yeah. you, they, Arsenal family could go stick shove it up their ass because there's no Arsenal family. There's no Arsenal family, and there's one this morning is going on about. Um, different things this morning about uh, genders and this and that. No agendas, me. I support my football club. And uh, that uh, American guy that said it, by the way, uh, I supported my club not because I just found it in an, uh, a hat like he did 20 fucking tw- 20 years ago when he didn't even know nothing about football. Uh, I support my club from when I was uh, a little kid. And uh, th- th- there we go. I'm not having it anymore. I'm not having it with these people. Uh, I've been going. Uh, me and you have been going. How many years? I've been going over forty years, mate. Yeah, so uh, yeah. And I, I've got an opinion. If you don't fucking like it, too fucking bad. Uh, I, I look at what I look at. We've wasted half a fucking season to get to this point because we are. If everyone is happy to be eleventh place uh, with this, uh, with a with the third highest, probably third highest wage bill in the country, then be happy. Uh, great. I'm happy that we won yesterday. I was impressed by the performances. You know as well as I've been, I've been calling for Smith Rowe. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm a guy that's not on fucking six million pound a year, by the way. I was been calling for Smith Rowe all fucking season. Yeah, right. While well, we've been wasting our time on the likes of Willian and all this crap, uh, p- p- produced non performances all season. This is the oh, oh, this is the manager that's wasted half this season. Yeah, and I'm going to praise him for, for the uh, the performance yesterday. Yes, of course I am. 
But it doesn't take away what we've now, we're in 11th for a reason. And we've wasted half a season. And this season will go down. We're probably not going to make any Champions League football. Hey, 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 you know, and the thing that kills it, right, is that the comments you, you're making about us being the third, the third highest um, weight um, in terms of third highest in terms of salaries we play our footballers. Mm. And let's not, let's not talk about our spending as well. Because yeah. there's a lot of people on Twitter who are saying, oh, Kronke this and Kronke that. He, he spent money. He may not have spent it wisely and he may not have got proper football people in and may not play good players. But he's not a football man. He's given Arsenal money to spend. I'm not saying out of his own pocket, but in terms of Arsenal money, own pocket. I think the problem with Arsenal fans is, and I've said it many times before, is that it's not a free lunch when you, look, when you, when you, um, you know, put your money into the football club. You, you have to be a pork chop or dare us to basically put your money in and and not get it back. It's not a bloody hobby. You're not putting, yeah. you, you expect it back. Abramovich has loaned that money to Chelsea. See, yeah. Everyone in football knows it's a it's it's a, a loan. Anyone who who thinks it's anything other than loan is completely and utterly deluded. And that's the thing that if Cronkay Cronkay's lo- yeah, it may. That's what I'm saying, but they, they get carried away with all this crap that uh, the owners put their own money. No owner puts their own money no, in. No, they don't. They own the club the money. What their, their, mon- their, their only money they invested is by buying the shares of the club, yeah? yeah. That's where they, they, that's where their money is invested, right? So what they do, it's like any, any business. You use the money that you that your business is providing with you. So, for example, uh, you do not spend money out of a business that you... Uh, you only spend money that you're earning. Yes. It's like any other business. It's the same thing. Mm. All this carry on about, oh, well, he's, he's, uh, he hasn't put his own money out. Where, where, how much of his own money? It's all bullshit. You name me an owner in any Arsenal history, right, that's used their fucking, used their own money. Come on, name me one. It, 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 and and cool, I've got something controversial to say as well. Um, someone I was in the gym with, you know, when I was training in the gym, you know, Teddy Setter and Caleb Daniel Wright, his name's, his actually name is actually Kenneth. Mm. And he's like, he does offshore banking um, in um, you know, a place offshore because he, he deals with um, clients who, um, who have, um, like I said, um, offshore accounts in um, like the, the Channel Islands, rich, rich men. And he was talking about Cronkay. And he's, he was saying to me that, Cron- that, that Cronkay, the dividends Cronkay takes out are actually not enough. He can take a lot more out of, out of the football club. He doesn't. Because like, people were talking about a few years back when he took out three million pounds. Because of the the way the, because of the profits, he actually could have taken more. And now he's, he said that when he's a sole owner, he could take, a, he could actually pay himself tens of millions if he wanted to. Now there's no evidence that he's actually done that with his football club. He's left the money there. And remember, he's given us a loan yeah. to, um, uh, in order to accelerate, um, like I said, the payments of the stadium. So exactly. instead of us paying it back in um, such such years, in maybe um, was it? Paying it back in about 11, 10 years, we've now we've we've now probably only got about two or three years to pay it back because he's actually loaned us that money. But we're not allowed to say that because you know there's there's a concerted campaign. So um, it's not Arteta's fault that we're um, in this position. It's Cronkay's fault for not spending the money. And I Love think for, you know what I mean. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Arteta's paid six million for a reason, a year for a reason. You know what I mean? So, what, hmm. what responsibility has he got? And then this is another thing <laughs> I, I keep getting yeah, as well is, <laughs> um, before is uh, when we was in the bad run. Now the players are shit, right? Hmm. And now, play, it's not. It's the players are great again. So, you know, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say to you, Kenny, is, right, mm. he's only by accident fell on these players as well. I mean... No, know, agree, 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 club. Uh, and also, the, the, in hindsight, I mean, uh, with hindsight, whether we would have we we picked these players had they not been... On, on uh, parties and getting uh, in the COVID situation, whether these players will be still be picked, right? Um, although I think Gabriel was uh, playing really well until the last couple of games, he had no fault. But the other two, the other two, I mean, have been woeful this season. Um, 
And I, I'm just saying, I, you know, I've been calling for Smith Rowe. You know, in the mm. chats we've had, I've had... Yeah, definitely. I never agreed with you, Bolo. I didn't agree with you because I, I thought that I, I wasn't convinced no. of his ability. I wasn't convinced. Well, he weren't even playing him until the end in the Euro, Europa League games. Well, that, that, that's, yeah. what I was trying, that's what I was trying to tell Tana yesterday. Tana, Tana mentioned uh, yesterday yeah. about, about the whole situation. And, you know, um, I know there's a guy on Arsenal fan TV, I think you know him, Yardman um, said something that was quite poignant as well about he's still not happy about the situation at the football club because he's saying now we've won three games, I'll pick, we, people are going to think well we've we've plugged this area because you know I know you you're you've been a, a massive um, how to say it, you've been a massive um, voice for the for the you know like for the fact that we haven't got much creativity inside of any, that we need a creative play. You've been a massive voice of that. Other people have been a massive voice of that as well. And Yardman said in his fan claim yesterday, now that we've won a few games against West Brom and we you know, scored about eight or nine goals in the last three games, are, are we going to abandon the you know, like the search for a creative player? And, and that's where he, he's raised concerns. I don't know whether you've got the same concerns yourself, Claude. Yeah, because what I'm looking at is, is um, also is how uh, near, because they're young players as well. Uh, they're going to take a dip in form, aren't they? They're also going to take a dip. At the moment, they're they're playing on enthusiasm, aren't they? More mm. than anything. And um, yeah, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's a it's a big one. It's it's um. I, I still think we will we will go in the market and get players. I don't think that that will stop him going trying to get players. But whether the mm. players that he gets are going to improve our squad is another is another is another thing because we've um, we've got the Pepe situation. I don't know where you feel about Pepe. You, you're not a great well, fan. well I've, I've, it's not a case of not being a great lover of Pepe, but but what, what, hello, what you say? Well, we spent a lot of money on him, yeah, and he's not and he's not exactly playing regularly, is he? And uh, this what worries me. Are we getting the right? Who's doing the recruiting? Who's doing this? Uh, what, what's happening? Are they on the same letter? Are they on the same same page? Is he on the same page as Edu? Is Edu bringing the players that Arteta wants into the team, or or is he or or is he just getting on getting along with what he's got and just trying his best in what he's got? These are questions that need to be asked as well because at the end of the day, it's like, uh, Edu is now leading the way to, for these new players coming in. He brought, the, he brought uh, players in in the summer who were surplus to requirement at so, uh, another club. Uh, are we going to get all this again in the, in the, in the, in the transfer? And also, January is not a good window uh, normally. Mm. It's not an easy window to get players because... Um, you got a white, uh, white has Mawar at Leon, right? But he's now top of the league in it, and they're not going to just let him go for, for for nothing because they're top of the league at the moment. So that's mm. that's another dilemma they got. Um, they missed out on the Shabosla. Um, he's gone to Leipzig, mm. uh, so I don't know where they're going to be looking. Uh, be, be, uh, I don't know about Berwinda. Uh, be, was his name? How do you pronounce his name? The um, Buendia. Yeah. Buendia. 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 You're very good at pronunciations, Kenny. Uh, Buendia. Yeah. Um, is he? Is he Argentinian? Yeah, he's, he's an Argentine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but the, the thing about it is that you made up. You made a really good point about about uh, Edu and um, and. Um, you know, like um, Arteta in terms of like their partnership. Oh, here we go. Hey, before you do that, this is a. Uh, um, can you mind if I just read it out? This is from Terry. Leave it on, please. Merry yeah. morning, everyone. Happy New Year, Kenny. Just, just thought I would proceed. I'll, pre I'll proceed. I'll, I'll just Boxing. popped into the re into the re re relegation party. Only joking. Anyone? I don't know. Let me see. Anyone tuning in? We thought we would get a smash. Thought we would get smashed four nil. You really legends. I love you, legends. Look, I fully get where Terry's come from. Like Terry, I've got a great respect for what you said. You've been very loyal to the manager, and you generally, you generally um, are being patient. And I hope 
for the foot because it, let's think, Terry, if you're proved right, we all win. Because, that, because, because for you to be proved right, in my opinion, we have to be challenging for the title and we have to be winning it eventually and we have to be in a situation where when we do compete in the Champions League that we're not making up the numbers, we're actually going to have a go at it, you know, be, have a good um, semi-final, be a regular semi-finalist, be a team that everyone fears in Europe and that, that's when um, hopefully you're proved right and I hope you are proved right but you just don't know at football, we just, it's, it's a long process which I, I didn't envisage we'll be having, Terry. Another thing as well is that I still disagree with you on one thing, that if we've got a more experienced manager, that we're, we'll be accelerating our process. Uh, yeah, because I, 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 because we're in this position because of his inexperience. You know what? You know. You know what I think it is as well. The teams have got better. I think what's happened is that I think one thing I've, I've never tackled with Terry, I've never really tackled with you, is that teams. We're in a situation now where we're, we're in a very rich league. That if you've been in the league two or three years, you can actually go up to a, um, a club and say to that club, right? You know what? If you offer us eighty million pounds for a player, we can afford to say no, thanks. We're we're building that. We want to. We want to kick on for the league. Southampton don't have to say yes to every bid that comes in. Neither do Leicester City. Neither do um, um, Newcastle. Any any club in the Premiership that's been there for two or three years. Let's face it. There's a lot of good teams in the Premiership, and people may say, "Oh, the Premiership's not that strong anymore." I think you do it to be disservice. There's actually strong teams. You look at the teams that beaten us at the Premier, beaten us uh, at the Emirates. Now, we're, we're the Arsenal, but come on, we are beaten with quality. Villa were quality, Wolves were quality. Burnley, despite the fact they were struggling, they still had a strong defence. They still had a competent midfield and they had players up front who could hurt us because of their work rate. So that's one of the reasons where I think that I am frustrated because these teams are now made themselves very cool of us, Claude. And that's why I'm frustrated. And that's why I'm frustrated still with this manager. Because it should be a lot better. Yeah, yeah. This, oh, I don't know what to say, Kenny. I mean, I just I just feel that we're in the position we're in for a reason. We've not mm. been good enough. And that goes from the whole club down. Mm. In the whole club down, who have not been good enough, and there's no defending it, you know. And you know, um, uh, look, we've had three great. I mean, the four, the Chelsea game, brilliant. Uh, Brian, yeah, I, I've got to say, what well, wasn't fantastic. We got the result. Mm. Uh, I thought West Brom's the performance yesterday was excellent. We uh, everyone everyone was playing, you know, to a good level yesterday, and uh, we've done really well. Uh, uh, how can I put it? Um, but it needs to be done over the next 10 or 11 games. We've got to keep it yeah. up. Because yeah. now, what, what will happen is uh, as soon as we hit one bad result, we're back where we were again, aren't we? So at the end of the day, we're, we're in, as I say, we're in 11. Uh, to me, uh, progress this season is, I always said at the start of the season, was to finish around at least near the top four or around the top four. Mm. I don't I don't at the moment it can happen because teams are dropping points everywhere. It's a strange season. No one's put any sort of uh, the reason we're still I mean another another season we would probably be even further behind but but no one's really been consistent even Liverpool are not being consistent this year because they're 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 slipping up. Of course uh, I'm surprised that they couldn't be that team that we were we murdered yesterday. I, I'm, mm. I'm quite surprised at that. But um, I think maybe when West Brom have to push it at home, I said it yesterday. I said, as, as long as we get the first, get an early goal or goal early, we'll go on and win it. Because I think West Brom, once they go behind, they're, they're all right if they've got something to hang on to. You know what I'm saying? But they, they have nothing to hang on to. That's it. They're, you know, they're a very, very poor side. Uh, mm. let, let's face it. I mean, uh, as I said, our defenders could have been sweeping the snow off the pitch yesterday. Yeah. For what they had to do. Um, 
But not taking anything away, I thought Smith, as I said, Smith Rowe was outstanding. I thought Saka, I think he's been brilliant all season, to be honest with you. He, he's had a, he, did, he did go down, but that's because the team was as well. He was affected with the team as well. But there was can a I, few. Can I, can I have one criticism of him, Doug? Can I have one criticism of him? If he wants to be a top, top, top player and he really generally wants to, you know, if, he, if he's competing for a place against, Cornwall dare I say, Willie, yeah, Willian and Pepe, score more goals, son. Yeah. Because that is one thing yeah. that's lacking your game. It's, not, it's all going really good. And, and, and that's not just sack it. It goes for a lot of players. Jack Grealish needs to score more goals. That will come because at the end of the day, we could have said that about um, uh, Robert Perez when he first come. Uh, mm. You could have said that about Thierry Henry. You know, can we tie that along? He's Maybe they need to be playing against with better players. Maybe if you had better yeah. players, it will oh, score more that goals. Doesn't help. It doesn't help. If I think if he'd have been playing, if he'd playing in Liverpool now, it'd be fucking, it'd be a revelation. Mm. I think he's just because he's playing with ordinary a lot. Let's not let's face it, he is playing with a lot of ordinary players still. There's still a lot of yeah, we're average, we're, 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 we're average, we're average. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, there's we've got some good players. I don't think we've got what I would say a world class player in the team. I think no. some would argue with Abam, yeah, but even him at the moment is I don't know what it is, but it, it was like we was playing with 10 men yesterday. I don't even think, um. I don't think he really made any contribution yesterday in a 4 0, which is which is quite amazing when you win 4 0 away from home that Bamia is not making much of a contribution. That's quite that just says it, it was a that just says it was a good performance. Yeah, I agree, agree with you. I agree with you. I think, I think the, pro, the thing is, right, is that I just think that obviously I've, I've had arguments with you, Claude. I've had arguments with um, Zach. Um, not so much AFSA, AFSA's agreed with me, but, I've had, but Chig's not agreed with me, Lee Gunn's not agreed with me, and many, many people in the comments haven't agreed with me on what is um, Ober's best position in the football team. Yeah. Because they, everyone, everyone was saying the logical, and it is logical, and it is agreeable, and I know probably Terry feels the same as well, that logically, you know, because he scored, 20, he scored 22 goals in the season, overall, um, if you take the cup goals, the goals in Europe, it's about 30 goals a season in two seasons. You think, right, he's played. It's logic to play him centre forward because he scores the goals and he's our main goal scorer. But my argument's always been that his best position is where he is now. That, and I think the managers kind of worked it out as well because Uno Emery, the dear to buy Uno Emery, played in that position. He played Lacker in the positions that he was. And Uno Emery was the one who got more out of Lacker. And a lack of an over partnership. I think what what um, this manager needs to do now is go is try and get more out of a lack of an over partnership. And then who knows, make make Saka or whoever whoever it is, you know, the third wheel in that. But I still believe that if Lacker if the if the positions play properly, if Lacker can hold the ball up, a bang game has to work make those runs in the box where he plays his best football, scores his goals. Unfortunately, See, at the moment, it, it's... Greenish. You said about Zach and not yeah. scoring, but he doesn't score that many either, Jack Grealish. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I mean. Yeah, Jordan, I agree with you. And I think, I think that's what I said earlier, is that, you know, Jack, Jack, Jack as well, Jack, Jack, Jack Grealish as well needs to score goals. And I said that earlier as well. But, you know, you see a lot of approach play, great, excellent approach play and everything, and you see a lot of assists. But, you know, goals goals has got to be the currency as well because one of the things that you've argued about in terms of, like, Nicola, Pepe, as opposed to Willie and, and, and Bakayo as well, is the currency of goals in that, in that Pepe, in terms of, like, scored more goals than these guys. And he has, and that you've, you've argued that, well, he hasn't had a run of games, the sort of run of games that... Um, you know, Bakayo's getting now and the run of the chances that William has been getting. And we believe that William's still going to get because I think he gets better opposition. It's going to be an argument that maybe William will play in that right-hand side of position because he will try and track the runs. Like, you know, obviously we're playing at home against Ast uh, sorry, Crystal Palace. But you know what sort of um, problems Crystal Palace are pose on both flanks. The pace they have it's unbelievable. You know, like they got, they got Eze, they got um, Sahar, they got Townsend to, to come on. 
They also got um, play. They got Schlop, who's a strong runner, and I and I and also they got um, AU, who's, who's got quick, quick, quick feet, and Benteke's um, enjoying his football again. So it's it's a tactical thing that Mikel's got to look at. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I, I think you've got a great point there, mate. And, um, there are there are players like look. Look, let's look at let's go through the team, right? Well, yeah. Leno, Leno um, he's been playing well, but then uh, can you rely on him on the whole season? Yeah, he's been playing well at the moment. He's playing really well. Um, but then you look, and I, I tell you where we've got. Um, <sighs> Hector Bellerin, no, there's a there's a player, right? Yeah. What, what, what are you thinking about Hector Bellerin? Can are you? Do you think he is now a liability, or do you think he can actually turn it turn it around? Well, he, he's proved a liability because because you know I I. I May City this season when we beat us at the Etihad, they exposed that problem down the right hand side, and that problem down the right side is affected is is where him and then Rob Holding play. Rob Holding plays the right um, side, the centre half, even in, in 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 a sort of as as a two or as a three. Either way, him and Hector Bellerin against teams with pace and with teams that can can um, basically have got trickery where you have the one two and you have overlaps. They can't deal with it. I don't care what anyone says. And the cross is coming as well. I don't care what anyone says. You only have to look at the main, the, 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 the goal against Man City. It was Dan Hector Bellerin's side, which um, Sterling scored. Look at the goals against Aston Villa, where him and Holding got absolutely roasted. Roasted by Target. Got roasted by um, Barkley. Got roasted by Grealish. And the way Ollie Watkins just ghosted in past them holding those sides. That's still fresh in the memory. Let's not remember what Neto did to, did to us. Dan Hector better his side. And, I, and I'm looking at it and I still think that he's a weak link. He is a weak link in terms of that. He gets ro- he gets roasted because he's trying to he's trying to amalgamate um, the, the attack. And also on the sort of um, turnover, he's still getting turned. I'm not saying it's happened recently, but there are teams that are going to still look at that side. Said, the right hand side, get at Arsenal down their right hand side, get them down the right hand side, and turn them, and, and they're going to, and they're even going to type attack Saka as well because they're saying right, what we need to do right is that when Arsenal try to do a counter attack, let's not get tight on Saka like Dan Byrne did for for, for our goal. Let's let's get in little positions, let him run at us, and then we make the tackle. We get tight in him, we're going to either fail him or he's going to spin us and he's going to use his pace to destroy us. So they're going to look at those sides and then they're going to think, right, what is Saka like without the ball? Remember when Saka was left back and um, he was, he was, we were talking about he was a cis man and blah, blah, and Tilly was, because Tilly was injured. What we didn't know is that Jacka covered him for him at left back, covered him. So we have to look at the same, same situation. Is Teams are still going to look at our right hand side, and Crystal Palace will, uh, are perfect for that. We don't know what Crystal Palace turns up. We don't even know what Arsenal turns up. You know what I mean, Colton? Yeah, yeah. How many games have we played this season already? You know, we we played we played uh, seventeen games, and so we've uh, we've had eight defeats, and we've had draws right. against Southampton, and games against Southampton and Leeds United. And we've won all the rest of the games. Yeah, I was saying eight, eight of them we've missed. Uh, we've virtually nearly half the games we've lost, didn't it? Really. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So it's a it's a funny, it's a strange season this year, isn't it? Because we we what um, ten points off off Liverpool. You know. Uh, what, yeah. Uh, but, normally, oh, we'd be at this time of the year would be about twenty points off with the record where we're. we're yeah, I think I think the, I think the oh, league's good. kind of evened itself out a bit, Claude. Because you know what's happening, right? You know, with COVID, remember we we've we've had a yeah. condensed program. We started the program in September. Yeah, yeah. Um, we started our league in September, and what's happened with the kind of midweek games as well is that it's all about operation. Finish the season in May, so the Euro Euro twenty twenty 
starts on time and doesn't get affected. It's all so basically, you know, I know a lot of um, it's probably going to be discussion later, but I know for some people like Bruce Allardyce, it's been murmured as well because of the the testing tests the results are coming back. Only not every football club is is suffering them. Um, um, they're su- suffering the worry of um, having positive test backs. We still we still have a situation where ninety nine percent of the tests are coming back negative. But yeah. people because because um, you have Man City calling games off, you having Fulham calling games off. Everyone says, "Oh, let's have a two week circuit breaker." <coughs> to be honest, we can't afford to do that because you know is you know all leagues now have proven that yeah. they can still carry on and still play. Without a pandemic, the biggest worry for the leagues were uh, regular testing and um, crowds. Well, they don't have that problem with crowds because they're not allowed to have crowds. The problem is, is that change the subject slightly. The EFL need to do more. They need to test their their squads more. They're not testing enough, and that's why they're having a, more tests. Do it more regularly and pay for it. If that means the Premiership paying for those tests, then pay for them, and then we, we then we'll, we'll we'll have that problem. We don't want to get in a situation where We've been, how to say, we've been, um, you, what's the word, Claude? You help me out here. I, 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 my mind's gone back. We've been, like, um, how to say, um, with laissez-faire with, um, with the situation. We still think we're out of the woods when we're not. Yeah, complacency, yeah? Complacency. Laissez-faire complacency, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah, because if you look at it, if, if you look at it, and, and, and this, I'm not trying to down 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 the achievements, down the thing is, but but if you look at it, I really, I was handed the game by Potter on on the other night. I mean, how he can go into a game with uh, um, even Paul Merson was very critical mm. that you can't play, you have to change six players, and. But I, I will say though, out of the three performances, I actually think you ain't gonna believe it. I think that yesterday was the best one. Yes, yes, that was the best one, best one, best performance. One. But performance, performance, performance. But in terms of for me, I enjoyed the Brighton one more because of the fact that even though they had six players out, we had to work hard. We showed we can work hard, work yeah. work hard, and that when when we um, when we went one 0 up. Um, we made sure that we quelled any onslaught from Brighton um, in order to try and get that in close. And we made ourselves very compact. We made ourselves difficult to beat. And we actually fought like Lions, some, you know, going back to the good things we were doing in the, in the you know, the cup games um, last season. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that's the situation. My whole, my whole, my whole, my whole concern has always been our ability to do the dirty jobs, and I thought I enjoyed Brighton more. Obviously, who, who's who's not going to love the, our second goal? Who's not going to love the fact that our Lacazette scored two, got is got in a school shot? Who's not going to love that Kieran Tierney's goal? And the fact that you know, I know I've had people, um, you know, um, like send me messages on Instagram, Venga Ball, which is you know why a lot of fans. Fell in love with a football club because of the football we played under our So, who's, you know, who's not going to love that? But, you know, to, to actually get in the top four and actually challenge for, you know, like for the league, it's games like Brighton, which um, when you which actually put you in the menta- mental state to win big things in the league, big games. There have not been enough of that this season, has there? No, not at all. Not at all. In, um, fact, in, fact, in fact, the problem is, it's been. Arteta has been trying to get us into that mental state where he wants us to um, um, make ourselves um, difficult to beat and more compact. But what he did is that he's put the shackles on where the, when we go a goal down, we don't know what to do. We start panicking and start trying to play uh, this adventurous role. And teams will think, oh, hello, mate. Just, just, let's just sit in, make ourselves a court beat and go turn them. And that's, and that's what's been happening. And I think that's where the, that's where the problem has arose. Yeah, uh, I think there's still, I mean, there's still a lot, a lot, a long way to go. I think the big test is when we actually fall behind again. If we do yeah. fall behind, that will be another big test because 
is to come back from behind. We've done all the rest of it. We've done the rest. This that is another big test we've got to find. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? There's other big tests as well, Claude. Other big tests. Sorry, there's other big tests as well. These kids in football, right? You are going to get a slap in the mouth in football, and mm. the way these kids are going to get a slap in the mouth this season. There are going to be teams, cute teams, we're going to play against, who are going to think, you know what? What are these like? What are these kids like defensively? And we're going to be playing a, couple, a few more cute clubs in the next in this calendar month. A lot of cute teams we're going to be playing, and that's where you're going to see the real test. Yeah, true, true, true. The very true. Um, Pepe and the Martin. What's yes. going on with Pepe? The thing I want to say: What is going on with Pepe? Because I. You you've been asking the questions. I want you because I don't. What can he do to get back in his team? <sighs> I don't know whether I don't know whether he fits the way Arteta wants to play. That's probably where uh, the, that's probably where the problem is at the moment. Uh, just, I don't. I, there is a player in it. There is a player mm. there. We're not seem we don't seem to be getting the best out of him. But that's mm. the problem. So the, question, the, the thing is, right? So, it is what what what's what's happened? Because if you look at the games, obviously the FA Cup is a cup competition, but it was um it was like um, how do I say it? It was like advertisement of Alteta. Those those games against Chelsea, um, uh, Man City in the semis, Chelsea the final, and the Community Shield as well, <coughs> where Pepe was very. Where Pepe was like, how do I say? He was very much prevalent in the, in those games in terms of like creativity and hurting team. What what has gone wrong since then? Uh, not not playing consistently doesn't help, does it? When you're not playing, you're playing one game and you're not playing in the next, the next game. You're not getting a run of games. You know what I've noticed as well. Villa doing very well this year, right? But I mean, all right, they slipped up against United. I thought they played they played their part in that game. I thought, I thought, I thought that was a beautiful game of football. Yeah. Brilliant game. They, they, played, their, they, played, they, they played their part in that game and I thought they were very unlucky not to lose the game. But what I noticed with them, they played, they not really changed the team. And the players have got an understanding to play in that in that team. I mean, I, I love McGinn. McGinn and uh, everyone oh, goes God. I love I, that player. I love McGinn. I think the work rate he puts in, mate, and he's a great footballer as well. But he puts the work rate. He's like he puts everything. He's got the work rate. He's got everything. You know what I mean? Long range passing. Oh, Villa better than us. A bit, Villa better team than us. Well, yeah, well, at the moment they are. I mean, they they've absolutely murdered us out of the Emirates, mm. didn't they? I mean, could have been more than three in the end. I mean, um, they mur absolutely murdered us uh, that day. Um, yeah, I think they are. I mean, you look at their midfield, and remember they're not uh, Barkley's injured at the moment, and he was really playing well, wasn't he? Mm. Uh, uh, I think the goalkeeper's been a great addition to them. He's really played well. Um, mm. Let's not talk about it. Let's not go into that, Martin. It's no, 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 yeah. no. He's playing well for them. He's playing really. No, 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 it's a sore point because I wanted. To, I, went, I, I was disappointed that he he left the football club. Yeah, well, and um, we've we've ended up with another a goalkeeper that's very. Uh, Wet behind the ears, we could say if we we're going to be kind. Um, I just feel they played the same team. No, 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 no they're not, not many, but it's ticking along really well. They, they, they've got that understanding between what they, everyone knows what each other's jobs are. Mm. And I don't think you can do that if you keep picking one player one minute and then dropping him the next. And that's why I, I don't see mm. where he's, how's he going to get that understanding with the rest of his teammates. You know what I'm saying? So that that is a problem for me. I, I, there is there is a plan. Maybe, maybe he's not he's not suited for the Premier League. That's, that could right, be another. My next question is right. Is a it's a good point you've made. Triore of Aston Villa hmm. has managed to is is has come into the side obviously because um, Bartley's been injured. And if you if dare you say it, he's a he he is. He's similar to Nicola in terms of the attributes, but 
he's finding the niche. He's hurting teams. All yeah, right, but he's maybe, maybe, maybe he's getting a run. Is he's he's getting a run in the team, isn't he? Because yeah, of yeah. Marcus, he's getting a run, which helps. Because that helps as well. Mm. Because you're getting a run, you're getting an understanding now the team. And I think that's the that's the thing. If you're getting a run in the team, you also what I think with them, their manager as well, uh, their players that come in, know the system, know how to come in and what to do. I don't think we've got that in our team as well. Mm. Whoever comes in, they know the, the, the system because I don't as well. But it's a hard one because I think an incredible turnaround because they were nearly they were nearly going down last season. Yeah, but they, they, they've, got, they've really bought well as well. Let's let's face it. As I said, the goalkeepers, the goalkeeper was a great, great because look at look look how many uh, brilliant uh, games he's had this season where he's kept them in um, when it were, when they were in difficult difficult job. But I, I do like Villa. I just um, I just wonder the only thing I've uh, wonder whether towards the end of the season because they've used the same players, whether mm. they might just pop a bit with. Uh, Fatigue, I don't know what it is. Don't you think that's going to be the same thing with our kids as well? Because everyone's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, like... But at the know, moment, they've only played two or three games, haven't they? I mean, yeah, Saka, yeah, but the other one I'm yeah. worried about is Saka because he's been playing yeah. all season, actually, isn't he? So, but he, he might drop off as a, drop off as well. And that's, that's only natural. It's like Gabriel. Gabriel hit a bit of a bad... And I was expecting... Mm. I was expecting this. This yeah. guy's coming. The only thing I'll say about Mari is uh, everyone is saying he's been excellent, but I don't think he's been tested yet. We've played... No, uh, I don't think so. Uh, we, we've played the Chelsea that didn't really test him. Um, I think he would have, might have been more tested if Giroud had been on the pitch. Yeah. Uh, I think... Um, yeah, the two guys, Brighton, Brian, Brom, they're not really... Mm. No one's... Really, look, Brian... Look, I'm not being fair. West Brom and Brian yesterday. That's why I think we made it cut. And I'm not taking nothing away from our team. But mm. both teams played without a natural centre forward, didn't they? Yeah. Both of us. Yeah. I thought, right. I thought, I thought Callum Morris was awesome. against us with, that, with no one really. So mm. it gives us more opportunities to play because mm. we've got no threat. When you've got no one threatening up front, it gives you more opportunity. I'd like to see us when we're playing against. Well, you said put a good example like Zaha and Ezzy uh, and Southampton with Danny Ings and um, Chi Chi Ed Adams and all that. Callum Wilson, out. Callum Wilson as well of Newcastle. Callum yeah. Wilson's an orthodox striker. These, 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 play these players will give us more problems, I think. You know what I mean? Um, let's go, shall we go on to the ratings? I know you like this part of you. <laughs> right, okay. you for, you're right. Let's go to ratings. Let's see. Right, the right. Right. Let's right. go. I'm going to start. Burn Leno, I thought. Burn Leno for me. Um, as you say, he could have been clearing the snow up and all afternoon, couldn't he, really, to be honest with you. But I'm going to give him a standard save. He made one uh, good save in the first, uh, was it the first half? Mm. But uh, apart from that, I'd, uh, he didn't have much to do, did he? I mean, in, uh, they didn't really do anything, did they, going forward? What about you? Uh, but Leno, I'm going, to give him a, I'm going to give him a six. Because again, it's Pete, Pete. You don't just give the team um, good marks. Um, you have to judge it on what they've done and how they've affected the game. And to be honest, Burt didn't really have anything to do. He, he had a good, he had a great save from um, Harper towards mm. the end. I think it was around the ninetieth minute where he made that save from Harper. Apart from that, he he wasn't required. He wasn't required. There were there were times when Burt Leno actually was on his halfway line because he had nothing to do. So it was. I'm going to give him a six. I'm going to repeat. I'll give him a six. Uh, Bellerin had an okay game. Nothing spectacular. They had one great shot uh, in the first half. I remember, which, which tested their keeper. But uh, got that booking, and maybe that. I'm not sure it was the booking that made Arteta think, "Well, I better take him out." Because in in them conditions, you make one one bad tackle. That's just a one game ban, isn't it? Um, and it's quite easy to get another second yellow in them conditions last night. Maybe that's why. I don't think maybe I, you're saying he took a knock. I think I actually think he might have been taken off to protect him from getting sent off. I mean, because mm. in them conditions, you're gonna you could make one missed time tackle and that would be it, and you're off the pitch, and yeah, because he was already yeah. on the yellow card. What did you think? I'm gonna actually give him 
I'm going to give him a six. How about you? Yeah, same, same, same marks. Um, Hector didn't really have much to do. He wasn't. They didn't really hurt us. And um, this, and they were slow. I just thought Hector was was steady. Six for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob Holding, um, he made that uh, uh, bad pass in the first half, which nearly led to uh, give us problems. Apart from that, I thought he had, he had, uh, yeah, he didn't have a bad game. But then again, I, I'm looking at that game. <laughs> As I said, the, the defenders haven't got much uh, to do there. You know, what I mean. They, they could have, as I said, most of them could have been just sweeping that snow off. Uh, uh, but I'm still going to give him, I'm going to give him a six as well. Uh, Rob Holding as well, didn't have much to do. I think what's happened is that he's at his best when um, when when um, he stands off defenders, plays on left-hand side, centre-half, and he's he's very good at um, set pieces. He, 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 love, he, lo he loves a header. You better worry about that in the future. With all that head, all those headers he's um, he's doing, because obviously with the um, the um, like I said, diagnosis and link between um, dementia and um, heading of football. But for me, six, I agree with you. It was a six. You know, he was he will comfortable, and so was he. Uh, Pablo Mari is there again, not really tested. Uh... I think he, his passing was good. Um, how can I say? He's um, one month. As I said, it wasn't really tested, but done his, done his job. I'm going to give him a six as well. Nothing, nothing. Just a solid, solid six, I would say. Is Kenny? That, I, I agree with you as well. I think that it was a solid game. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go on. Sorry, Kenny, go on. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him. Um, I'm going to give him um, Pablo Murray six as well. Had nothing to do. They, they they didn't hurt us in in any offensive areas. It's not a difficult decision to give him to give him those marks. I have no uh, disagreement. You're kind of, you're kind of. Or. Um, Oh, Most of the people have, agree with us on, on the marks. The marks well. that you awarded him. Uh, Most people are agreeing with us on these marks as well, mate. Uh, six for Mari. Uh, I'm, I'm moving on to Kieran Tierney. I thought uh, excellent, yes, absolutely excellent performance. I love the rolled ups, the sleeves, the short sleeve in the cold conditions where everyone is wearing so much gear on. Yeah, they're not giving. Love yeah, exactly. Loved his performance. Great goal. What a wonderful goal. Uh, beautiful goal. Uh, his crossing was good for, as well for the one of Lacazette's goals. You know, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding performance. As I said, when I first saw him, he reminds me a lot of Kenny Sampson. I'm not yeah. saying he's there, but he, there's, there's a lot of Kenny Sampson in there. It's nice to see a, a proper, proper left back at the club. Proper player. Captain material in the future, definitely for me. Uh, outstanding. I'm going to give him a nine. I'm going to give him a nine. Uh, uh, me, me as well. I'm going to give him a nine as well. And I just want to sort of say something shortly. Uh, give a short um, speech. It's not, to, and I think it's a lot to do with Scotland. A lot. Mm. If you look, if you look at um, Scottish football at the moment in terms of internationally, it's stronger at the moment. It's because of players like Robertson, Tierney, players like um, McGinn. All those sort of players coming through at the same time, where it's not going to—they're going to be—they're going to cause a nuisance in the Euros, wherever it is, whether it's going to be a games at Wembley, whether it's going to be abroad. They're going to be—they're going to be a team that you should not um, underestimate. They've got a striker called um, Linton Dykes who's got pace and he can play with his back to goal. So they actually got some decent firepower. So watch out for Scotland and watch out for Tierney as well, who's going to be probably playing. They're in England's yes, group. Yeah, right? they're in, and Tierney is probably they're going to play. They play a back foot back. They play a back five. So Tierney plays um in the left 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 um, um like side of the defence. Another thing as well. Just sorry to cut as well. Have you noticed that Tierney's playing his best football in his proper position at left back? 
Just saying. Oh, that. There's another thing because now we've changed it. It's gone to the. Yeah. <laughs> of course, he, he, I always said that he had the other position, not him. But for Scotland, he doesn't do it because of Robertson. I suppose he's got to play there, hasn't he? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, no, I've always said that. Uh, no, that goal yesterday was an uh, unbelievable goal. The way he took it and put it in that top corner, un unbelievable goal, man. No one was going to save that, mate. Last, um, not a um, chance. So, boy, else, I thought uh, not. I'm not his biggest fan, but I thought he had a good game. I'm going to give him a seven. I thought he done well, Sabias yesterday. I'm going to give him a seven. I, I agree with you. I thought Sabias um, did well. He, he came into he came into the game into the second half where, you know, he, he you know like I said he relished the space we were getting. He wanted to get involved. When he thought, oh, you know, this is a bit of fun now. I'm getting involved, and you know he he, he did get us into some very good situations. So I fully agree with you. I'm going to give him a seven. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, um... Granny Shaka thought his passing was excellent uh, yesterday. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm not his, as once another one. I'm not a big fan of, but yesterday, he, nothing done. What it was, uh, what's on the thing yesterday? <laughs> done. <laughs> hey, you, you, talking of Granny Shaka, right? You need to get your, you need to get um, some we we respect a lot, we like a lot, we have rails with a lot. You need to get Warren was on the show. You have to get him on, and I think he'll say yeah to you because he loves he loves you a bit. You need to get him on the show, and you need to because I think I think I think it'll be good good. I would watch it, and I think what's happened is that he knows his stuff. He explains himself really quickly. I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. I agree with him on Ozil. He won me over on um, Ramsey, and we we seem to be of the same opinion about Granite because. What Was does is that Was talks about what Grant Jacker can do. <laughs> He's like me. We know he, he, we know what he can't do. We want to concentrate on what he can do. And I think with Grant, it, he is what he is of a team. Good passer, reads the game well, you know, understands tactics. Just when, but please, when, when you're trying to when you're trying to defend the counter attack, just get him away from there. Don't let him do nothing. You know what I mean? He's gonna he's gonna mm. do something stupid, but. Yeah, I thought that was a seven performance as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'll, it's a bit of a choice between me, and I'm going to give both of these players the same mark, and I thought I was going to who was man of the match. But it's Bakaro Saka, uh, uh, alongside Kieran Tierney, uh, the best players on the pitch. Uh, absolutely superb. Um, took a bit of a knock, though, came off. Uh, I think precaution wise, and I, I think that was a good idea because we thought we were, we were already uh, in the ascendancy. And so, listen, uh, I thought he was outstanding again yesterday. And, uh, another goal to his game. Um, as you say, he needs to score more, but I think that will come. Um, but creatively, he, he, he's given that creative spark to the team now. Uh, some, sometimes he puts in some brilliant crosses and no one. Uh, giving it justice, you know what I'm saying? So, listen, I, I, I'm going to give him a nine. Brilliant. I, I, I think what's happening right now is that he's what what you want a player like that to do, especially at a young age. Why do you want to justify the fight? You want him to justify the faith that um, you've put into him. Two, you want him to affect the game. He does that. Most importantly, you want him to express himself, or he does that a lot. And another thing as well, he, you want him to give you a selection headache. And what he's done is that Bakayo's given um, Mikel a selection headache. In the, in the, in the, it's just, you think, oh my God, what do I do now? Because he's managed to, he's, Pepe's got a problem now. I don't think Willian's got a problem as such because I think he's still a Willian man in terms of when we play difficult opposition. But Pepe's got a headache now because he's played consistently. He's proved he can play he proved that he could play on the left hand side if we need him. But also but what's happening now is he's played him in a position now where he's played him as on the on the right hand side. He's given him kind of a free ish role. Mm. A free ish role. What I want now is that I want some Gareth Bale performances, right? I know they're there. I know it's a big ask, but I want goals. I want him to be on every free kick. I want him to like shoot from ridiculous angles, which he's trying to do right now. I think 
I think what's happening is giving the Nash for Gareth Southgate the selection had eight as well. But for me, nine. But he's not my man in the match. I'm sorry, he's not my man in the match. But I'm going to give him a nine. Who is your man in the match? Then? You need to fight. Wait and fight that. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's go. Smith, uh, Emil Smith Rowe. I thought, uh, yeah, once again another good performance. Uh, you know, I think he's given us that. Um, what do you mean? Oh, how can I put it? He's given us that uh, little bit more extra since he's come into the team. Uh, something we've been missing. Uh, fitted very well into the role he's, he's played. I'm going to give him another. I'm going to give him an eight. What about you, Kenneth? Emil? I'll stingy on my marks against Chelsea. I thought the reason why I was stingy, I gave him a six last week, is because I thought in a Chelsea game he was required to do other things to help the team, the ugly jobs, and so he wasn't able to um, display, you know, like to dis put his strengths on display in an attacking um, um, format, like he was probably able to do against Brighton. And he was definitely able to do um, um, yesterday. So, that, uh, for, so for me, I'm going to give him an eight. I think he's had to be patient. And I think he's still going to have to be patient as well because there's going to be some games where we're not going to be able to use him if the manager's got any sort of um, thought, decent thought process. He, he, you know, he has to, there's going to be a horses for courses. And Emil's not going to be the, the horses for those particular courses that we're going to face in in later games. Okay, well, that, that might might be divided. Opinion might be divided on that, but I agree. I'm, uh, uh, Bamiang, uh, uh, I thought very poor. Didn't hardly get into the game, but for one, we didn't really need him. And I, it's, it's strange, isn't it? We've won four 0 and he's hardly made any sort of impact in the game. Uh, which was it is very strange because if you win four when you win when we're winning four nil, you expect the Bamian to be one of the uh, main contributors. He didn't hardly contribute in this game. I think he's uh, confident. I, I don't know whether it's the injury he picked up against Sheffield United if he's still playing him because he's not. He don't seem to be running freely like he he, he used to. Um, but I thought it was poor. It's the uh, I'm going to give him a I'm going to give him a five. I thought it was very poor. Um, I agree with you as well. He's he's been very poor for a long time. That could be a combination of loads of things. You know, the injury, the knock he got against Sheffield, you know, at it. But also, it, he's a marked man now. Teams know what teams um, know about his strengths. They know like that he that his two big strengths are his ability to run into the box at, at great pace and have shots and goal and score, and also his ability to appear late in the box and interchange positions between himself. Um, and his his other part, his other two partners in the front three, so that's where um, teams are kind of working out. But another thing as well is his application as well. And I, I I am going to blame the manager as well. I think the manager's tactics and mixed messages uh, has killed the bad man in terms of his um his utility to football side as well. Because you've asked a player to um, stay at the club, be a legend at the club. Now, when you ask a player to do those two things it's on the premise that you're going to build a side around him. Well, there's no mm -hmm. evidence that he's built a side around Aubameyang. Maybe he's looked and said, well, there's other players who, who are more prominent. But, you know, Aubameyang will feel great about the service he's getting. And yesterday was no different. I thought he was sluggish. Um, there, were, there, were, there were times where, you know, where he did use his pace, where he, you know, he managed to um, give... Um, Give um, was it, um, was it, and um, furlong a bit of a, a bit of an odd time. But apart from that, where, where he was effective is that is that he, he occupied furlong and that gave Tierney the space to to um, murder 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 um, West Brom down the left. But for me, it's a five. I still have genuine concerns and genuine, how to say it, reservations about whether he should be in the team or not mm. at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the reason he's in the team is because of his, his status, and I don't think. Yeah, and I, and we, I fully respect I, that. I, I, not only that is, can we really uh, have, as you got the bottle to drop another three hundred grand a week footballer on? on well, uh, well if, 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 if think about it. So far, if you look at the games, the players who've missed out um, when we had team selections has been Mark, has been Lacazette, 
which was a wrong decision for Brighton, mm. and he comes and scores. And Martinelli, which is a uh, which is which again for Lacazette, but you know Arteta's got the sort of armory, although I say the explanation that well Martinelli's been playing three games in a row, and, and he's just come back from injury, so we need to rest him. We don't want to sort of um, put him yeah. in the red zone. So that that's what he's got under his sleeve in terms of an explanation. So there's there is going to be a time when if Aubameyang is going to be out of form, where you know. Arteta, Arteta has either got a duty to the promise he's made to the player and to see if he can come out of that form or he's got a duty to the team and uh, make his decision. So far, he's yeah. bottled it twice for me. He's bottled it. 100%. 100%. Um, well, now I'm going to come back. The man who's re has, re uh, how do you can say, reset, uh, resurged his career again, resurrected his career, um, is... Uh, Alexander Lacazette, it seems. I mean, a man, I mean, we can never thought his work rate as a player, but now he's adding goals to his game as well. And probably uh, as from from nowhere, as the suddenly looking good again. Um, I thought, yeah, another excellent performance. I'm going to actually give him a nine yesterday because I thought he was there. He scored, he scored uh, two. His um, excellent work rate, his work play, his build up play was good. Everything about him was good yesterday. So I'm going to give him about a nine again, I think, um, uh, which gives a bit of a headache for um, for Mister because I don't think we can play him, Abami and Martinelli and Saka in the same team, can we? Well, well, Martinelli be the player to miss out because Martinelli plays in um, Ober's position on the left, and he gets energy. So in terms of like um, Martinelli, he he'll, he'll have to be patient. He's not really that fit anyway, so he, he's going to have to be patient and get himself fit. You know, he'll be playing um, next Saturday against Newcastle in the FA Cup, so that'd be a game for him. William will be playing in that game as well, so William will have to, you know, put a bow up his arse, score some bloody goals, mate, so we, so we, so you can get your opinion changed, changed about his, you know, your contribution and your place in the side. So there are games for him to, to impress. Obviously, we're going to take Newcastle seriously the FA Cup because we're the holders but mm. these are the games where, where you can prove but in terms of like Laka my man in the match not Saka Laka get it Laka yeah. Saka but the reason why I'm giving Matt, uh, a, a Lacazette the man in the match because he performed today he was involved in the in the um, in the in the worldy goal that we scored uh, which um, Bikayo scored and also he scored two goals as well and I thought his overall play was brilliant. Hold up play, exemplary. Ability to play with his back to goal, half very happy with it. Getting the ball, passing it, and trying to get his mate into the game while he lacked um, a Bamiang. Very pleased with that. And he took his goals with a plum. And plus, he was hungry there. He was sharp. You know, there was a time where he, sh he, where he should have got a goal where, where it was an under hit pass. He managed to round um, Johnston. And it was the old Lacazette, the Lacazette I don't like, where he's not, where he's not composed. He still manages to get the shot on target. It's not like I must score, but those other two goals are very happy with. And um, that's that's the lacquer that I like, and that's the lacquer that I've always bigged up. The lacquer, I, the lacquer I don't like, that I want is to be sold. Is not the lacquer I like. Lacazette is always, in my opinion, for the way we play, is always. It should always play in a set of set of four position, not a Bamiang. A Bamiang in that system plays his best football where he is. And I think another thing why I'm happy for Lacazette as well is because for some reason the romanticists amongst Arsenal fans are now writing them, um, rewriting them um, their plays, their Disney plays about um Giroud. Oh, Giroud we was such a great striker, we really underappreciated him. And look at him. Look what he's doing. He's 10 times better than Lacazette. He could do... He, he hasn't got better goal scorer than Lacazette. Let's not forget, right, that you called Giroud... Some, you called him a wardrobe. You called him a... You called him a, a fashion model. And you are very critical of the fact and that... He's, you're critical... Not, I'm not talking about you, but the whole... I'm just saying you, but I'm talking about the fan base as well. Let's face it, that this fan base handed Giroud out the club. For, because they blamed him for Mesut Ozil's 
um, lack of form in um, in the 15, 16 season and the latter stages. It was Giroud's fault. Well, they had a point, though. Yeah, they had a point, yeah. Giroud, Giroud divided opinion when he was at the football club. Giroud, in my opinion, is not what Arsenal needed. He's effective, but if you look at his record, Giroud scores his goals in bunches. Like, for instance, you'll score, he'll have a game, he'll have a, a period of eight games scoring regularly, score the odd hat trick here and there, and they'll go 10 games without scoring. He's still having those same sort of situations at Chelsea. And he, you know, in France, he's got very, very good play. And there's, there's a system which he fits into France where he allows uh, the players yeah. to play. But let's not rubbish Lacazette by rewriting, rewriting, rewriting history regarding um, Giroud. And, I, I, and, I, and sometimes you've got to say enough's enough when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah, Bargab has come in with a super chat here. Yeah. Lacquer's still getting sold this summer for being so streaky. For you guys, who's ahead in the pecking order? Willian or Pepe? That's your question, Claude. And I'll go after you. For me, long term, uh, um, at the moment, I mean, he's not, oh, he's not doing that. I'll still, feel, I'll still put Pepe in front of Willian. I think William said his best days behind him, mate, and um, I think he's just here. Um, I don't think he's got that commitment that he had at Chelsea. That's, um, uh, my, that's just my opinion, Kenny. I'm sorry to say. That's my no, opinion. you don't have to put your opinion. It's, it's, that's the thing about football, is that it's very boring if we all agree. It's very boring in politics if everyone has some cons if all parties have the same consensus. You want you want, you there's, there isn't an opposition. You have to have an opposite view. But in my view, in terms of lacquer, yes, I do definitely agree that long term, I still think he's going to be one of the players we're going to be looking at in terms of his salary and the fact that he no, that's his contract. His contract yeah, unfortunately, one year. Con yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, you know, Bargo, if you're right, he is a streaky striker like like um, Olivier as well. So you're going to want that sort of regularity, and you are going to look at players. You know, like people talk Edouard at, at Celtic, and you're going to look at someone and say, Right, I want a number nine. I want someone who smells goals, who's greedy for goals. I want yeah. someone who's as greedy as like, as um, a bang man for goals. You know what I mean? So, and you may have to change your style. So, I do agree. In terms of like, in ahead in the pecking order, yeah. it's Willian. It's Willian's head of the pecking order. Like, as, uh, the point I was going to make before um, Terry. Um, made this very good point, his um, good message as well, was that it's very much Arteta who's um, picking these who's um, picking these signings as well as um, Edu. Let's not forget Arteta's the team manager. He would agree with it. And let's not forget that Arteta was selecting Willian in, in yeah. these games. And during that bad run, he was re relying on Willian. He still trusts Willian more than Pepe. And he, and he still wants there's certain jobs he wants Willie to do. In terms of like in Chelsea form, obviously, obviously as, as from the outside looking in, we looked at, he looked at the free kicks, we looked at the penalties, we looked at the work rate, and that's what we fell in. That's what we liked. And let's face it, the work rate's there, but the end product is sitting there. But in terms yeah. of what the manager wants, I still think he's out of Pepe. Unfortunately for Pepe, Pepe's in that sort of box that. If he doesn't do it in one game, he doesn't get another chance. He just put and he's and let's face it, he's put himself in that box. I don't know what he's saying. I love a you. you uh, I like I, I love, love a high jazz. I don't know what uh, that means. Uh, so, I like uh, a high jazz. Yeah. Thank you for the contribution, though. Uh, uh, but uh, is it Bish Bosch? Uh, thank you for the contribution, though. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. By the way, everyone, uh, just been reminded that we are we are doing a watch along this afternoon for Ch the big game of the weekend: Chelsea versus Manchester City. Uh, Massive. This could be. I don't know how this is going. The way Chelsea are playing, I think this is a big one for Lampard as well because I think a defeat here could spell more trouble with uh, uh, in the Roman camp for Frank Lampard. I think if they get beat again today. Um, good, good point, mate. Good point. But you know what it is, mate? You know, like, I was watching um, Dar um like the show with um, Vic Vicky Somers so Gomesall and um, Abom Abom Lahore and Darren Lewis. And 
I had Diesel. Love you too, mate. And basically, they're talking about the support that Lampard's got behind the scenes. I think it's kind of similar to what Mikel had. Graham yeah. Sky is a massive fan of Lampard. Um, also, um, he's got the he's got he's got basic support of um, the players. What they were saying, and also he's got the support of Ramon because of what he's done as a player. Mm-hmm. And but the the thing the thing that Lampard's got against him is that ordinarily, had it been any other club, you'd say Lampard's learning the ropes. He's got to take time, but he's at Chelsea now. He spent a truck loads of money. Havertz, um, Werner, Zayic. That is a lot of money, mate. He yeah, spent. Yeah. Even though, even though they they were they transferring bar guys, that's still a lot of dough that they spent. Plus another thing as well, he do, he still doesn't know his his best team. He knows his defeats. He's sure he's goalkeeper, but in terms of his midfield and the sack, apart from Mason Man, he, he doesn't know his who his team. And that is transferring to the Chelsea team because no, let's get let's get it right. With the money Chelsea spent, they should be challenging Liverpool. You know what I mean? And the that they should be changing Liverpool. I'll get that coming up. And uh, there's a nice uh, Bish Bosch again for a nice, nice contribution. Says Ice Ice Bank. Myself. Oh bloody hell! I'm for from that one. Hey, he yeah. can say he's, if he's paying the money, he can wait. If he wants to keep, if he wants uh, no, to no, no. that go on. Uh, 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 yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, oh, there was a comment here, and I've lost it now. Where is it? Where is it now? Uh, yeah, well, this is for you, Kenny. Would you take Edward from Selwick? Well, yes, you will, because the reason is that I, I, I look at, I look at, I look at um, the players that we're that the club look at in terms of like they always sit and look abroad. You know, yeah. this guy. We've got this French, this teenage ascension from Spain. Let's go and buy him. This player is smashing it in La, La Ligue in France. Let's go and get him. This player in Premier Liga in Portugal is doing it. Let's go and get him. La Liga. And I'm thinking, well, hang on here. We're watching our rivals. We've seen Aston Villa going out, take a punt on Ollie Watkins. Mm. And it's come off. All right, Ollie Watkins has probably scored his goals in bunches, but he's given a team a lot of a lot of industry and pace, and he's taken to this league like a duck the water. We look at what Liverpool have done. Look at the, look who Liverpool's where these players have come from. Liverpool, their best players: Hull City, Robertson, Southampton, Mane, Milner on a free for Man City, Henderson, Sunderland. All these players have come from our league. We and yeah. it, it, you look at Man United. All right, Maguire from Leicester City. They spent a lot of money on him, but Maguire. In his last few games, during that run, everyone's talking about Fernandes. They're talking about Rashford. They're talking about Martial. They're talking about Cavani. But Maguire has is, is looked really has played really well in defence. You know what I mean? We need to look at play, look at the gems right in front of our nose, and that really frustrates me when we when we just think, oh, oh. They're playing. For, they're playing. They're playing for a team that's below us. Why should we want them for? Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. It's mad. Yeah, Pl- plane av- aviation has sent three ninety nine. No message, but thank you for that as well. Uh, so, prediction for today's game, but the big game today, Chelsea. I think there's another game going on as well, but I don't know. I forgot. No, was, Newcastle but... playing Leicester. Um, that's going to be a fantastic game. I think, well, I, think Leicester, the, I think Leicester City are going to win that 2 1. What about the big one, Chelsea Man City then? Uh, I, I, you know, Man, Man City, City have, I, I, or, uh, with COVID, didn't they? So. Well, yeah, they, they, yeah, for COVID, yeah, but we now know the real reason. We now know the reason why they got infected. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why it's very unfair in Everton to have their game postponed when, when we've now found out the real reason what. Why is that? But I think it's a disgrace. But in terms of Man City... Well, well, what do you mean a disgrace? If the players got COVID... Uh, well, well, the fact they got COVID is the fact that there, they, there was reports and, that, and, they, and they've been corroborated 
that there was a party organised by a certain man. But then I think they should be deducted points for it then. The club should be No, deducted. I wouldn't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think well, so. The so. players have done it, isn't it? Because they yeah, but, yeah, but the thing, the thing about it is you deduct that points. You, you, what, why, the only time you should deduct points is when they can't fulfil fixture. Now, and, that, and the thing about it, right, you actually... You actually got a point. Well, there. they can't. They didn't fulfil it, did they? Yeah, and, the and, and, and party, and, 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 and that's the situation. But then again, do you do the same for Fulham? Because you know, Mitrovic <laughs> was. Um, a, 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 well, any uh, team that does it, any team that does it, and if their players are responsible, they're all part of the team, so they yeah. should be. They should be hanged for it. Yeah. See, see, but, see, that, see, see, and that, and that's a problem. Is the increased test in the is the positive test coming out? In apprenticeship, due to the fact that we 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 uh, countries are controlled the pandemic, or are these guys, um, like I said, le leaving their biochemical biochemical um, um, bubbles? You have to ask that question. My, I, yeah. On the evidence that I've that I've seen, yes, they left their bubbles. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. But in uh, terms of like the Chelsea game, I think Chelsea will win because Man City don't have a the don't have a, a striker. I don't care what anyone's. You can have all that approach play. But if you, you don't yeah. have someone who can yeah. hold the ball up. Yeah, you don't someone who can put the ball in it. Chelsea should win this. I'm going to win this comfortably. I think if they play Giroud, they could give Man City a lot of problems at the back as well. I think they could. They could uh... Yeah, you know, Tammy Abraham scored goals as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I think Giroud is a better option. I think Werner. Been... A massive disappointment. Massive disappointment. He's trying to work. The, the lad is trying to work. He's worked what they're calling him finding Timo now. Yeah. But you know, you know what's happening, right? He's, tr he's trying to work. He's getting to great positions and he's desperate to do well. Desperate to do well. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I don't know what the situation is. Is that good thing? Yeah. The good thing he's got in his favour is that. He's not playing badly. He's just missing a truckload of chances, and it's getting affecting him mentally. And he looks knackered as well because he's running, he's running, he's running his, himself into the, his boots. Oh, there's another one here I missed. There, look, big up lads from uh, Isle of uh, Gaypoon. Uh, Isle of Gaypoon, big up lads. Got some fun, got some funny names on here, mate. I tell you. Uh, I was just uh, this is a uh, Chelsea might might beat City. It's like a, it's like a two deal game. Yeah, a great possible. Jordan. Uh, it's a very it's a very possible uh, result. That um, who knows? And who knows what will happen? This season's been so strange. So many strange results. Uh, Man City. I don't know. Got, have so many games in hand. I don't know where they're with at the moment. So they need to win today because otherwise they could really be struggling to. What, uh, what Man City need to do is go in the market and buy a striker. Buy a striker. Yeah, sure. Going up, get the strike. If you want, if you want to, if you want to win, a, if you want to win the Champions League, and you want to, you want to, you want to still challenge for this league because it's still gettable, or and you, you don't get a striker, then God, then more for you. Because I'll tell you one thing, right? You're going to allow Man United, possibly, and Liverpool to run away from you. Get a striker now, Man City. If you have any brains, yeah, get a striker. Listen, everyone, um, thank you so much, Kenny, for coming on today, mate. Uh, fully really enjoyed it. it. Um, we, 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 we don't hide what we need. I'll, as I, I'm going to read a comment to end the show, it's from um, on Twitter today. It says, and which I find quite amazing that that we are me, the likes of me. Uh, just uh, not supporting our, uh, not getting behind our tower because it, it affects our business agenda. And I find it a disgusting comment. Rubbish. You know, the person, Rubbish. The person, who knows it, the person who's done it is a disgrace. And uh, I've got no business agenda, mate. I was going to Arsenal before even social media was coming out. And uh, anyone knows I, lo I love my football club. Uh, it's completely ruined relationships with me, with certain, with uh, because of my love for my football club. And I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have this shit said mm. about me or other people that are my friends. Because at the end of the day, we do all care, um, and uh, sometimes we do we do have a little 
Uh, but that, sometimes you know we, we we react in in certain ways yeah, because we care. That's what we care about our club, and we are happy when we win. And um, if people are happy to be sitting in eleventh place, then that's up to them. But I'm not. Uh, I'm fussy. I, I, I want the best for my club. I expect my club, who is the third highest paid uh, wage wise in the league, players on hundred grand, three hundred grand a week. I expect them to be up there challenging for the major honours, and I'm mm. not seeing that at the moment. And that, that goes down to the manager, the players, and all the st and all the uh, backroom people to get their act together. And uh, yes, well done. We've done three good wins on the trot. And let's hope it can carry on and uh, we get back to where we belong. But it doesn't mean that like, we shouldn't have a say on what we do. Oh. As, for this, as for this family, Arsenal family, it doesn't exist. Arsenal family 100%. Doesn't exist. 100%. 100% great club. Not exist. It hasn't, it's never it existed. Exist. All this exist. Arsenal community, family, it's all nonsense. At the end of the day, the club has always treated people like custodians rather than a family. And I don't, I don't care whether maybe one or two individuals yeah. they might, might uh, love and uh, support. They're, they're the ones that just confide to their uh, to what they believe, uh, what they do as I say, and what I, what I believe in. But at the end of the day, it's not a family; it's a divided fan base, and it always will be. While other, while there are snobs, hundred percent in the podcast world, and who think they're better than anyone else, and, div and who set up groups thinking that they're the only ones that can speak on behalf of the football club. Nonsense. We're all fans. Everyone is yeah. a fan. No one is bigger than anyone. And the biggest thing about the football club is the football club itself. It's bigger than anyone. Yes. Player, management, or any or any fan. There we go. Look, I, and I, you had to say it right, Claude. I'll definitely, and I'll second that as well. Everyone else has got their own individual um, supporters experience. You, yeah. if you want, if you want to form a group, a form a WhatsApp group of all your friends or you all your group, then crack on with it. Leave people alone. You don't own the fan base, yeah. all right. We don't have to all be friends. We don't have to all drink in the same establishments. You go your way, and we will go our way. Because the end of the day, when we do go to games, we go to watch the football club. We don't. It's not about you guys, all right. We don't. We don't, you positive people are bullies. You throw your weight around like. You own the fan base and you make out you're great guys when you're not actually great guys. What you do is you try to suppress people who don't agree with you. And then when they, and then what, and then what you do is you form a gang and then you try to ostracize people. And then what will happen is that, and then you'll try to be friends with them all of a sudden. No, it doesn't work like that. If you, if you, if you want to behave like that, then go your own way and leave people alone. At the end of the day, everyone else, you don't pay for my season ticket. You don't pay for my membership. You don't pay for my... Once you pay for my membership, you may have a say. And even then, I'll tell you, get take a running job. Enjoy your fan experience. Enjoy your friends. Leave everyone else alone. Don't, put, don't think that you speak for everyone else. You don't. You don't own the fan base. Mm. Yeah, no one owns the fan base. No one... And everyone has got their individual right. No one is bigger. No one... There's certain people in this, in this uh, supporters who think they're bigger than anyone else. No one's bigger. We're all fans. No one's bigger. Uh, there are certain people that think they're professional fans. Well, they're like, jog on as well, mate. Jog on. Don't tell me how to support my fucking football team. Because I will support it anyway, the way I want to support it. And if you don't like it, switch off. Switch off. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. I couldn't give a fuck about you or anyone else. Right? Don't listen to me. If you don't like what I've got to say, then switch off. There we go. Uh, thank you for that, Daniel uh, Carty. Thank you very much for becoming a YouTube member. Thank you so much. We'd love to see you on the stream soon in the member stream. And that's another one I clicked up for the new year. Thank you so much. Uh, all our members, all our subscribers, and even every, even people that um, have, uh, watch the channel and contributed to the channel, thank you so much. We enter another year, hopefully not as bad. Well, I don't know if it can be any worse than last year, but hopefully uh, come the summer, we'll all be back to normal again. Hopefully even before, maybe the spring, but we'll be back to normal again and we can all do what we want, what we love doing and then going to, going to support our football club. And <clears throat> because at the moment it doesn't seem right, does it, that watching games with no crowds, but 
anyway uh that's kenny thank you again for coming on mate and uh always a pleasure having you on and uh we'll see you soon i'll be back tomorrow hopefully i've got to make i'm not confirmed yet hopefully I have lee gunner back in the building that should be interesting and uh yeah lee gunner back tomorrow half past 11 hopefully other than that have a lovely day also don't forget today tonight uh the game tonight back at 4 15 watch along chelsea versus man city big game this uh, we don't just do Arsenal, we do other clubs as well when there's a big game. So watch along te with Terry. I don't know if Diesel, if he's got some bird there in his bed. I don't know if he's, he, he can make it. Um, but other, other than that, we'll see. Take care, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs>